just the essentials. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movies everyone needs to watch once. Hello! For this list, we're looking at the most important horror films that anyone with even a passing interest in the genre must check out. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Halloween John Carpenter's seminal horror film may seem dated when compared to today's more violent and blood-soaked slashers, but it is absolutely required viewing. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, right or wrong. Like all great slashers, the story is simple. A group of teenagers is stalked and systematically killed by the masked Michael Myers on Halloween night. <laughs> Myers is perhaps the most iconic slasher in movie history, and Jamie Lee Curtis makes her brilliant debut as young Laurie Strode. The movie does a lot with a little, generating scares out of a distant figure staring at the characters and various creepy music cues. You can ignore the numerous sequels, but you can't ignore the 1978 classic. Number 9. Alien When it comes to space horror, it doesn't get much better than Alien. What the hell is that? Jesus Christ. Alien could have been made in the 21st century, such is the strength of its set design, performances, and practical effects. Absolutely nothing about this film has been dated, and it's just as effective today as it was in 1979. Like Halloween, the story is your basic slasher. An alien gets loose on a spaceship and hunts the crew. But Ridley Scott's assured direction prevents things from getting corny and cliché, and Sigourney Weaver's Ripley is one of the best protagonists in horror history. It is perhaps the greatest blending of science fiction and horror ever put to screen. <laughs> Number 8. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre What isn't scary about a crazed lunatic chasing people with a chainsaw? This is perhaps one of the rawest and most visceral films ever released, despite showing no on-screen blood or gore. Made for as little as $80,000, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has the atmosphere of a snuff film. The cheap, low-budget aesthetic lends it a dirty and grimy feeling, like maybe we're watching something we shouldn't be watching. It's just pure backwoods violence and depravity, and it will likely be too much for some viewers. Now don't you cry none. <laughs> Old grandpa's the best. It won't hurt a bit. In fact, the film was highly controversial upon release, with many taking note of its sadistic violence and unsettling storyline. But it's now rightfully regarded as a masterpiece, and Leatherface remains one of horror's most terrifying antagonists. Number 7. Night of the Living Dead George A. Romero created, or at least popularized, the zombie genre with Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Those looking for Dawn of the Dead-style gore need not apply, as this movie's violence is incredibly tame when compared to Romero's later works. But the movie's claustrophobic setting, black-and-white cinematography, and lack of cinematic flourishes lend it a degree of authenticity, as if we're watching an old home movie of the initial zombie outbreak. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is, kill the brain, and you kill the ghoul. The movie also contains an intelligent racial undercurrent, with many seeing Ben as a symbol of domestic racism and an analog to topical figures like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. Number 6. Rosemary's Baby Everyone knows the 60s as a time of great political and cultural upheaval, and like Night of the Living Dead, Rosemary's Baby uses horror as a means to explore topical issues, in this case, the women's liberation movement. Maybe all of this is coincidence, but one thing is for sure, they have a coven and they want my baby. On its surface, Rosemary's Baby is about a pregnant woman who believes that her Satanist neighbors are using her baby as a vessel for the Antichrist. It works wonderfully as a simple horror story, but it's mainly used for allegorical purposes. 
Rosemary feels progressively helpless throughout the story, unable to turn to anyone for help. Help me! Oh, Rosemary, somebody help me! Her autonomy is taken away, and she is constantly placed at the whims of outside influences. The feeling of utter vulnerability the movie horrifically captures is scarier than any demon baby. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Number 5. The Exorcist The Exorcist is touted by many as the scariest film ever made. But don't let that distract you from the movie's genuinely fantastic execution. Keep away! The sour is mine! It is certainly scary, but it's also an impeccably made movie in its own right. Everyone knows about Reagan's demonic possession, which obviously contributes most of the movie scares. Amen. Amen. But at its core, The Exorcist is a deeply personal tale about Father Damien Karras, a Jesuit priest suffering from a crisis of faith and harboring deep feelings of guilt in his mother's recent death. The movie is about finding God just as much as it's about fighting the devil. The former lends the movie its emotional heft, the latter its iconic and allegedly heart-attack-inducing frights. I think the point is to make us despair. To see ourselves as animal and ugly. To reject the possibility that God could love us. Number 4. The Shining There have been many haunted house movies throughout the years, but The Shining is the greatest of them all. Hi, Lloyd. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> like many movies on this list, The Shining uses its haunted hotel trappings to explore deeper and more personal themes. The core story involves the Torrance family moving into a haunted hotel over the winter. Of course, the performances and Stanley Kubrick's filmmaking are both transcendent, but the movie generates much of its scares from the personal. Hello, Danny. Come play with us. Exploring themes of alcoholism, child abuse, family dysfunction, and cabin fever, The Shining deftly combines its horrifying supernatural scares with a deeply troubling story of mental degradation. Here's Johnny! <laughs> We don't know which aspect is scarier. Number 3. Bride of Frankenstein This is widely regarded as director James Whale's masterpiece. And this is the man who gave us classics like The Invisible Man and the original Frankenstein. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well... We warned you. Improving on the first film in nearly every way, Bride of Frankenstein may just be the greatest sequel ever made. Boris Karloff returns in his iconic role, and this time he's joined by the classically hairdoed Elsa Lanchester as the bride. And? Friend? The movie is weird and campy, but it also just might be the greatest example of gothic horror ever put to film. It uses Christian imagery to comment on the monster's identity as a man-made abomination, deepening the themes of both the original film and Mary Shelley's source novel. She's alive! Alive! It is the perfect distillation of the Frankenstein mythos. Number 2. Jaws Steven Spielberg's filmography is generally recognized as being magical, fantastical, and whimsical. And then there's Jaws. Beach is closed. No swimming. I order the Amity PD. Despite its more grounded story of a man-eating shark plaguing the beaches of Amity Island, Jaws still retains Spielberg's dexterous directorial style. He manages to turn the movie into a cinematic tour de force, complete with thrilling camera work, proficient editing, horrific violence, and iconic musical cues from John Williams. <laughs> There's also the timeless performances from Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw, and Richard Dreyfuss, who help make the action-packed third act just as fun and dramatic as it is terrifying. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Jaws birthed the summer blockbuster, kept people out of the ocean, and permanently altered our perception of sharks. It's pure movie magic. Why are you son of a I have seen the majority of the movies on this list, and I can agree, everyone interested in horror needs to see them at least once. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Get Out, a nail-biting blend of thriller and horror, Jordan Peele's directorial debut is scary and topical. This bitch is crazy. This bitch is crazy. 
The Silence of the Lambs. Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter will never not be scary. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Rabid, a terrifying body horror zombie film from director David Cronenberg, the master of the genre. For heaven's sake, what happened to you? I can't remember anything. Carrie, Stephen King's exploration of bullying remains relevant and horrifying. Scream, Wes Craven's meta nod to the slasher genre perfectly merges horror with comedy. I'm sorry, sorry. Oh my god, Randy, I thought you were dead. I probably should be. I never thought I'd be so happy to be a virgin. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Psycho Psycho has lost something in its ascension through the pop culture consciousness. The numerous twists are all well known, so new viewers might not have the same experience as audiences who went in blind back in 1960. Yes, Mr. Lowry. Carolyn, Brian still isn't in? No, Mr. Lowry, but then she's always a bit late on Monday mornings. Buzz me the minute she comes in. We'll call her sister. No one's asking at the house. But our knowledge of the twists doesn't make Psycho any less enjoyable. The direction, cinematography, and performances, particularly that of Anthony Perkins, all remain commendable. And the story can still be enjoyed as a thrilling blend of detective fiction and slasher horror. We're all in our private traps, clamped in them, and none of us can ever get out. We scratch and, and claw, but only at the air, only at each other. The movie also helped pave new ground in regards to cultural norms, including its depictions of on-screen violence and sexuality. Psycho had a profound impact on both cinema and wider American culture. Therefore, it may just be the greatest horror movie ever made. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.